from the birthplace of radio's greatest era, live from New York, it's Radio Night Live with Kevin McCullough. Wait, who? Kevin McCullough, let me start with you. Huh? The big dog, Kevin McCullough. Who? I'm Kevin McCullough. Uh... Nationally syndicated radio host and author of No He Can't. Kevin McCullough. Kevin McCullough is a nationally syndicated radio host and author of No He Can't. What? Uh, Barack Obama's dismantling hope and change and CEO of Extreme Media. Oh. Hey, we're glad you're with us. It's hour number two on a Saturday. And, of course, that means that uh, it is time to once again open up the uh, Ladies' Lounge. And, uh, man, we've had a lot of fun with this since we moved it to the... Uh, to the Saturday Night Show. Uh, the Ladies' Lounge is a, is a weekly opportunity. Is that is that a new graphic? Did we just add that? That is that is shows that is some sharp stuff. Actually, it's either that or quasi. Uh, 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 I'm going to get in trouble for it. I'm pretty sure. Uh, anyway, uh, we're so glad to welcome brilliant women to the airwaves, and uh, the the uh, guest this week is someone that I just was introduced to by. The super producer, Frank Morano. I referenced him in the last hour. He uh, produces most of the uh, uh, talk shows on my flagship station here in New York, AM 970, The Answer. In fact, there's, uh, not, there's not really any show that he doesn't have his fingerprints in some part of uh, except for mine. <laughs> so now he's, re he's recommending guests for me, and uh, we're glad to have him uh, do so. But anyway, he said, Kev, there's this, there's this really dynamic uh, young lady who is just tearing it up uh, for the conservative cause in New York City. Her name is Melissa Jane Kronfeld, and uh, she goes by MJ, and she uh, got in touch with her, and she said she would be delighted to be with us tonight. MJ, welcome to the uh, Kevin McCullough microphone. Glad to have you. Wow, thank you so much for having me on, Kevin. How is your night going? I, well, you know, we got word from Wyoming today. It's going pretty good. Oh, we're feeling good over here, too, at my MJ Cruise campaign headquarters in Midtown Manhattan. So we couldn't be more excited, and I don't think that anything could sum it up better than Ted's emails tonight when he noted that since March 23rd, uh, delegates have gone 102 towards the Cruise campaign and only seven for the Dump Trump campaign. So we couldn't be happier over here tonight. We are celebrating already. Let me ask you about this. There's some, uh, and I don't know if you've noticed it. Have you noticed how Drudge has gone all in for Trump in the last uh, few weeks? It's just gotten disturbing to me to see. <laughs> he, he's like bought and sold. He's like Breitbart. It's really gotten really, really bad. <laughs> No, you know, I, I find it really interesting. I'm not sure I, I still have yet to put my finger on the pulse of what makes a Trump supporter, especially in New York, because there's so many people here in the city that have run, run have had run in with him and know the kind of character that he has when it comes to doing business and his other dealings. And, you know, I just don't understand why people are so in the bucket for him. And the drudge thing is just confusing me top notch. There's got to be something going on behind the scenes that we're not seeing. Well, you know, Drudge is very tight with Ann Coulter, and Ann's been right. uh, in for Trump from the very beginning. And let's face it, Trump sold a lot of books for her uh, yep. with the whole build the wall thing. So I, yep. I kind of get all of that. But it is it is disheartening to see, uh, like for not, tonight, for example, the front page headline of the Drudge Report says another voterless victory in Wyoming. It's not true on two levels. They had a statewide vote. There were uh, 12 delegates assigned out of that. Ted Cruz took nine of those 12. And then even the ones that were in the convention that he won tonight, they went through the, basically the same type of caucus to convention to uh, floor fight to uh, final vote uh, process that Colorado and North Dakota went through. There were lots of votes cast for these uh, characters tonight. Absolutely. You know, I think that I don't I think it was either yesterday or today, but I think the Washington Post really summed it up well when they said, you know, the battle is really erupting ever since Trump has come out and said that clearly the system must be rigged because if it's not rigged, then why am I losing? And, you know, the Republicans came back in force and they said, No, the system is not rigged, you're losing because, you know, you're losing and that's just how it goes. Um, so I think the tide is really turning. You know, I studied semantics while doing my PhD, um, and we essentially sort of break down, you know, how words are used and that effects that it has on our society. And one of the most interesting things I've seen just by reading the headlines over the past, really since the Tuesday, is the media's acceptance in how they have made Trump happen and how they're really kind of shifting the ties. I mean, when you see the New York Times write a story about Cruz that's not negative, when you see Cruz on the cover of Time magazine, I think the media is finally owning up to their role in this crazy Trump phenomenon, and they're doing what they can now to circle back with the 
pure expectation that we can't allow Donald Trump to win because if he does, you know, um, I believe um, it, it's just going to be the end of America. I don't want to be one of those people that says, I'm going to move to Canada if he wins, but we might just become, you know, part of Canada if he does. We might see the dissolution of the United States because this guy is just not ready to be president, nor will he ever be. Well, he's got he's got some temperamental issues for sure. Uh, but let's let's talk about uh, some of the areas that you're focusing on now. First of all, uh, this is your first visit into the ladies' lounge, and we appreciate you being here. Uh, but uh, introduce yourself. What are you all about? What do you What do you work on? What do you do for your day job? Uh, let Let my listeners get to know you a little bit. Sure, sure. So I'm a lifelong New Yorker. Um, I uh, did all my degrees. I did all my studying in international relations, international law, national security studies. And I was on the uh, kind of 10-year fast track to be a professor while finishing up my PhD at Rutgers. Um, and sadly, my dad passed away three years ago this May. Mm. Um, and that had a big impact on my life. There's, uh, there's a prayer that we read at the great side of a parent that says, you commit yourself to tzedakah, you commit yourself to charity. And I was always very involved in charity and philanthropy. Something about that really stuck with me. And I just made the decision that I could spend my life in the ivory tower of academia, impacting 40, 80, 120 minds, you know, many classes I had per semester. Or I could do what I was preaching to my kids, which is go out there and change the world. So I decided to leave uh, my job teaching, and I started my own uh, company, which is Social Impact Consultancy, and our mission is really simple. If you are trying to improve the lives of other people, we will help you. If you are serving other people, we will serve you, no matter what that is. You want to start a charity that's going to save orphan starfish in the Nigerian desert, great. We're going to help you save those orphan starfish. Whatever your social impact is, we will help you get there. And I feel like that's the best way I can magnify my, my role in the world and really fulfill that dictate of Tikkun Olam, which we believe, you know, repair the world, make it a better place. Yeah. Well, and uh, some of the hashtags you use on some of your social media posts are uh, Millennials for Cruise and Jews yep. for Cruise. So that, yep. that tells us a little bit about uh, what your uh, leanings are for the election, but why yep. those two groups in particular? Um, so I'm a millennial, and um, about uh, say four years ago now, I joined an organization called Nexus. Nexus is a global organization of 3,000 young people around the world that are exclusively committed to social impact. Hmm. Um, and in being part of that organization and seeing how these young people are going out there and changing the world, I realized that the millennial voice was not only being ignored, but had a real lot to offer the world. And I became very involved in millennial movements, millennial politics, millennial social stuff. And um, in that capacity, I kind of rose up the leadership skills in the millennial community as a voice of someone that says, recognize us. Look what we're doing. We've got, we've got great ideas. We're doing great things. We're not this lost generation that everyone thought we were going to be when we were graduating high school in the early 2000s. We're actually, you know, really changing the world. We can be, I believe in the bottom of my heart, we are the next greatest generation. Um, so that was where the millennial stuff came from. And given that I focus on millennials, I rally millennials, um, and I really amplify millennial movements, I wanted to make Millennials for Cruise something that was important. I wanted Millennials to realize that this was our candidate because what I saw, what I saw at least in New York, and this is where I'm mostly based, um, I saw that the vast majority of conservative Millennials were going for Marco, and I didn't feel like there was any good reason for it. I thought it was all style over substance. You know, Marco, he's the young guy. He's the cute guy. He's got the pretty white. You know, he, he talks slick. Um, and I thought, all right, but that does not a president make. And I saw a few millennials going towards Cruz as they kind of felt he was an old school Scottish Republican, even though there's nothing Republican about him. Um, and I really wanted to try to forge the road and say people between the ages of 18 and 35 should look at Ted Cruz as the guy that we need in office. He's going to create jobs. He's going to secure America. But more importantly, and I pointed this out to someone the other day, I didn't even realize it, he's the only viable candidate that we have under 50. Okay, Trump is pushing, he's in his 70s, right? Yeah. And Clinton, she's in her 70s. God knows how old Bernie Sanders is. Oh, my goodness. But that was where the millennials for food came, and I really <laughs> wanted to do what I was good at, which is rallying that age group for the person that I felt strongly in. Now, the Jews for Cruz thing is a little bit different. And anyone in New York who knows me or knows my name knows that I am a diehard Zionist activist. <laughs> I work on behalf of the state of Israel in every capacity that I can. Um, obviously, the organizations I work with don't endorse presidents, but I do work with some of the biggest Zionist organizations here in Manhattan, serving on their leadership boards, serving on their young specialist yeah. boards. 
And in that capacity, I thought, all right, I know how to get the Jews going out. I know how to get them to do stuff. So let me and some of my friends get the Jews for cruise up and going. There it wasn't you go. my idea. There you go. It was given to me, and I decided we would make it happen. Well, that was, uh, and that was one of the paths that, uh, that, that we had that crossed, and we didn't even know it. Uh, but you were, you were part of the uh, Stop Iran rallies. I, I, we both yeah. spoke at those, and uh, Richard Allen, a good friend of ours, helped us uh, put that together. Yep. And, and uh, good stuff. When we come back, uh, MJ, talk to me about your interactions with and how you originally uh, came across uh, yeah. Senator Cruz because it's quite a story. Sure. Yeah. Uh, we'll do that on the other side of this break. And uh, if you're if you've called and you're holding on, we're going to get to you guys. I see your phone calls, uh, but we've got a a, a, a very special uh, ladies uh, lounge guest with us tonight, Melissa Jane Kronfeld. Uh, you can follow her uh, on uh, Twitter uh, at. M E M M underscore J. That's that's her uh, Twitter handle. We'll come in right back. Historical credibility of the Bible is under attack. Many experts say there is no archaeological evidence for events like the Exodus. They claim these stories are just myths. Earlier this year, in theaters nationwide, thousands gathered for an historic one-night event for the release of a new documentary, Patterns of Evidence, The Exodus. Investigative filmmaker Timothy Mahoney journeyed to Egypt, Israel, and throughout the world to search for answers to one very important question. Did the stories, as written in the Bible, really happen? 12 years in the making, The Exodus presents convincing scientific new evidence that clearly matches the biblical account. That documentary is now available on DVD from Thinking Man Films. It features stunning animations, narration by actor Kevin Sorbo, interviews with leading archaeologists, and guest appearances by Israel's Benjamin Netanyahu and Shimon Perez. Patterns of Evidence, Exodus, the DVD, soundtrack, and book wherever DVDs and digital downloads are available. More information at PatternsOfEvidence.com. Miracles are God's way of letting us know He's here. From the producers of Heaven is for Real, Miracles from Heaven. Mommy! Mommy! I'm coming! Unfortunately, the tests confirm that she's very ill. There is currently no cure for Anna's condition. We're not giving up. Based on the incredible true story. We need a solution. And we'll get it. How? By not losing our faith. Like a small boat. This Easter. On the ocean. So you're telling me that when this baby girl fell 30 feet, she hit her head just right and it healed her? Yes. That's impossible. How do we explain the impossible? He told me I'd be fine. Who told you you'd be fine? Miracles from Heaven, starring Jennifer Garner. Now playing. Rated PG. Parental guidance suggested. For tickets and showtimes, go to Miracles from Heaven. Hi, it's Kevin McCullough. You've heard me for weeks telling you that I'm getting better sleep than I've ever gotten before because of my pillow. My pillow was just awarded the official pillow of the National Sleep Foundation. My pillow is the world's most comfortable pillow because their patented interlocking fill conforms to my unique shape, resulting in the most restful sleep I've ever had in my life. And my pillow stays cool throughout the night. They guarantee it for 10 full years not to go flat. In addition, you can just throw it in the washer dryer and keep it nice and fresh for years to come. And now a better reason for you to try my pillow: 50% off of all products at MyPillow.com. That includes all sizes of pillows, the fabulous bed topper that revolutionized my lovely bride's sleep and everything else 50% off and if you can't check them out online then give them a call the number is 800-506-2641 that's 800-506-2641 1-800-506-2641 and most important of all use the promo code KMC promo code KMC when you call Hi, Kevin McCullough, CEO of Extreme Media, the media company that brings you this broadcast. Do you use PayPal for your home-based business? Do you take credit card orders online and use their services to help further your goals? Are you in favor of the fact that they help process credit card transactions from pornographic magazines and Planned Parenthood? Are there other things that you're concerned about, like the safety of our citizens and not giving monies back to, for instance, activist Muslim organizations? PayPal does not distinguish between honorable and dishonorable businesses. And every time you pay them, your 2.4 vendor percent, you're helping further the goals of Planned Parenthood, pornographic magazines, and activism causes you may not believe in. Fortunately, there's a better way. We call it cleancreditbiz.com. Cleancreditbiz.com. If you wish to keep your credit card processing free of any dishonorable associations like pornographic magazines, Planned Parenthood, or activism causes you disagree with, cleancreditbiz.com or 888-340-3373 press 2. cleancreditbiz.com. 
If you're watching on Biz TV, that's a live shot of Midtown. So glad you're with us. It is uh, Radio Night Live in America. And uh, Kevin McCullough, glad to be with you. Uh, you want to do anything with me, it's thebingethinker.com. All my social. Uh, you can watch the television feed of this show every week. It's all there. Uh, and uh, the Ladies' Lounge, of course, uh, the uh, f the prominent feature that we've added to the second hour. It was a part of my late-night show uh, when I was Monday through Friday. Now I'm afternoon drive, so we don't have the late-night show anymore. But uh, Melissa Jane Kronfeld is our uh, guest tonight. She she likes to go by MJ, so yeah. I'm, I'm trying to uh, break myself of the habit. And you didn't even – you you you, you, I, you, you I forgot, or you didn't tell me, or some combination thereof, that you're a Ph.D., so I should well, be I, saying I, Dr. MJ. Soon, soon enough. In PhD, ABD, I still um, have a few chapters of my dissertation left to uh, oh, okay. write and defend. So um, it's been a bit slow um, of late, of course, because of the campaign and because I started my... Uh, okay, so I don't company. have to call you Dr. yet. Not yet, not yet. But when I do, <laughs> trust me, and I come back on... You're going to beat me over the head right. with that. McCullough, Absolutely. you better start showing some respect here. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Hey, let me let me take uh, let take our listeners back to uh, because you're you're a young professional. You're in New York. You're uh, you're organizing all these events. Uh, there's a lot of cool things that you're associated with, and and you have the chance to to go and and learn about this guy, Senator Ted Cruz, who mm -hmm. now you are passionately advocating mm -hmm. for. What was it about how you met him? What happened when you met that caused you to say? This is the guy that I'm, I'm going to get behind. Tell us how you originally uh, came across him. Sure. So Nikki Huzin, who um, a lot of people who are familiar with Camp Hill know, he's one of his top advisors um, up there in the his, you know, really close tight circle. Um, he was um, in charge of Republican politics in D.C. for a long time, worked with a couple of other awesome people. If you Google him, you'll find out how amazing he is. And Nick is a great friend of mine. And Nick started working for the senator, and he said to me, Senator's coming to town. Uh, we're doing a private dinner. I really want you to meet him. I think you'll like him. And, you know, I probably knew about him not much more than anyone else did. I knew that he was the Tea Party guy. I knew that he had done that really awesome filibuster on the floor um, of the Senate. And I said, sure, why not? You know, you never pass up an opportunity to meet a politician when you're in the advocacy space because you never know how that might help you advance some of the amazing causes sure. and issues that you're working on. Yeah. So I went to the dinner, and it was about 40, 50 people, a very small room at someone's home. And um, he spoke, and I was just blown away. And I've met dozens and worked with dozens of politicians. I, there was something about him that just stirred me. And I'm sitting next to Nick, and I'm getting more and more excited. And uh, when it was over, and the conversations and questions were over, and dinner was over, Nick told me to meet him. And the senator looked at me, and he said, I got to say, I was watching you in the room, and you've got a great energy. You were really into the conversation. And I just, my heart melted. Everything about him to me, he came across as the perfect gentleman. He was so poised. He was so smart. Even when he, he, he didn't necessarily know everything about a certain topic, he had a good answer. He made commitments to learn more. And, and he just started talking, and I jumped right in to tell him about a project I was working on at the time. And you would have thought the way, was, the way he was listening and talking with me that this was what he thought was the most important cause in the world, and it was about Holocaust survivors and our need to support the Holocaust survivor community in America. And we just had such a great conversation. And I left, and Nick said to me, we would love your support here in New York. And I said, I'm in. And I have been with him from the start. And i got to be honest, for the past however many months it's been up until Iowa, I have been crucified among my friends, among my peers, among New Yorkers in general. I mean, I, to be completely honest, I've lost friends, at least in the very beginning, um, because of my support for Cruz. And mm. I never wavered. I never stopped. I truly believe. And then we took Iowa. And all of a sudden, I started, all these people started coming to me. And we started winning more and more delegates. And then people started becoming more and more fearful of Trump. And people started coming to me in mass. I mean, I'm literally getting upwards to 100 emails, phone calls, text messages from a day from people that I don't know and I've never met asking me if I can help bring the senator somewhere, asking if they can meet with the senator, asking how they could support the senator. And that's, I don't want to say that I feel vindicated, but I feel vindicated. Sure. I no, knew I... from day one this was the guy that was going to sweep the conservatives and the Republicans and really take us all the way back. To well, that makes, that makes total sense. We're speaking with uh, MJ uh, Kronfeld, uh, soon to be 
Dr. Kronfeld, uh, who is uh, who's uh, working with the Millennials for Cruz uh, effort. And, of course, this is just ahead of the uh, huge New York primary that Donald Trump is just going to run away with. But uh, it's it's an interesting uh, section of the election cycle, uh, MJ, from this perspective, that you have um, uh, w- one candidate who you just described in uh, meeting him, the perfect gentleman, uh, totally uh, appropriate, uh, complete etiquette, et cetera, et cetera. It, y- you have the guy that uh, is opposing him who associates with people like Roger Stone, puts uh, trash in places like the National Enquirer, who mm-hmm. literally knows no bottom shelf uh, that he's not willing to stoop to to try mm-hmm. to hurt or gain advantage in a contest. And when it comes to that part of the discussion, how important mm-hmm. is the class and the character and the integrity to the millennials today? I think I think it really is because I think millennials are an OBS generation. You know, I mean, we we go out there and we do things. I think the the kind of perfect example is you know they say millennials job jump a lot. You know, we don't stay somewhere until we retire and and we and we get you know that gold Rolex. And and because we're great judges of character, we we know what what needs to be done, how to get it done, get it done, and then move on to the next big thing. And I think that Ted Cruz really represents that. I mean, I see people all the time. With all due respect to, to to Donald Trump, he doesn't represent me as an American, as a Republican, and really as a human being. Um, and there's something about Ted. He's remained so classy throughout this race. Granted, there's been a couple of times on stage where everyone's kind of, you know, come out and get a bit catty and everyone showed their fangs and make fun of everyone. But when Ted has done it, he's done it at the moment when Trump has been so obscenely rude to the candidate, to the moderators, to the audience, that you know it was it was justified. Yeah. You know he made his knocks only when it's necessary. Most of the time, and this is what I love about Ted. Most of the time, you'll see him put his head down. He does that really sweet southern smile, and he'll look up, and he'll get right back on the issue because you don't pay any mind to people that you know are beneath you. And I have no doubt that um, Cruz is a man of class and character and intelligence above and beyond anything that any other candidate is on stage. I mean, I'm a Jew, so when Alan Dershowitz comes out, and we disagree on a lot of things, but when Alan Dershowitz comes out and says, this is the brightest kid I have ever had in my 20-plus years of teaching, that says something. Yeah. That says something to me as a member of my community, as an Especially intellectual. Especially when he just had the yeah. previous president in his class, too, and said he was firm middle of the packer. Um, yeah, last exactly. question, MJ, yeah. and it's a sh- it's a shorty. I've only got twenty seconds, but give me got your it. thoughts. The difference in Trump and Cruz on Israel and why it matters. On Israel and why it matters. So um, it's, it's you know Trump has wavered back and forth. He said you know I'm open to negotiations with the Palestinian people, and the only way you can be open to negotiations with the Palestinian people is when Hamas says they will recognize Israel's right to existence, and anyone that knows the issue knows that Hamas is standing line, is that they will not recognize Jews, they will not recognize the Jewish state, they will not recognize Israel, and they will push us out to the sea if given the chance. And Cruz has never wavered. When he stood up at the APAC policy conference and said, I'm Israel high, I buy him on that one, because the Jewish people are living, they are alive, and they will keep going, and they will be stronger and better for it when Cruz becomes the next president of the United States of America. All right. That's uh, well done. You did it in uh, less than 20 seconds. MJ Kronfeld, thank you for being with us. Come on back to the Ladies' Lounge. Kevin McCullough coming right back to Radio Night Live. Stay with us.